Okay, we are up to the last poem of the analysis sort of group that we're going to be analysing, Country Towns. This is, to me, a nostalgic and quite poignant portrait of uh, an Australian country town. It's quite gentle in atmosphere, I think, and quite... Uh, it's not elegiac, I suppose, because no one's died, but it does have a, a little bit of sadness about maybe the fact that it's been forgotten or um, the t that time seems to have kind of moved on and left it behind. So we start off with country towns with your willows and squares and farmers bouncing on barrel mares to public houses of yellow wood with 1860 over their doors and that mysterious race of Hogan's which always keep general stores. So it's kind of got this tongue-in-cheek, slightly optimistic. Um, you feel like the speaker loves country towns, willows and squares, you know, willows being English trees that are perhaps first planted there, farmers bouncing on barrel mares, like healthy um, horses. Um, uh, going to these public houses which are kind of they've been there a long time they feel sturdy 1860 they've been there for a long time and had people come in them and the the idea of the general stores at the school of arts a broadsheet lies spread with the sarcasm of flies you know that you know in the idea of you know in summer always having these kind of lots of flies around because of the the environment and the cows and things like that but also this um you get this sense of isolation from the broadsheet itself it was this performance that was put on once a very long time ago to probably a small audience and you know all these dreams and hope for people who will come the excitement of this um which was really quite a small affair and then is over it's a bit forgotten um and all the you know, broadsheets have been left up, no one's gone to take them down. But at the same time, it's not a hopeless or, you know, poem. It's not full of some of that uh, sense of, you know, death or all that sort of stuff. It's more about the place. And I think if we can say that William Street is about the beauty of the city, this is about the beauty of the country. So verandas baked with musky sleep, mulberry faces dozing deep and dogs that lick the sunlight up like paste of gold or roused in vain. So it, it's got a, a rhythm to it, it's got an optimism, it's got a structure. You've got this, the word mulberry again, kind of going back to this historical, it's a historical sort of berry that you know, sort of associated with an English past and verandas and people sitting on them and being watching out for each other. It's where time moves slowly. It's a, it's a place of summer. It's a place of summer holidays, of dogs sleeping and um, this drowsy kind of sleepy forgotten place, but a little bit empty as well. Country towns with your schooner bees and locusts burnt in the pepper trees. Drown me with syrups and arch your, arch your bowels. Find me a bench and let me snore. Till charged with ale and unconcerned, I'll think it's noon at half past four. So it's sort of, you, you can lose yourself in these country towns and time kind of stretches on, but then, you know, it, it's still moving forward. You're not sort of free from that, but it seems to be a respite. And I get this sense of goldenness. You know, he talks about sunlight in a really um, nostalgic, warm, wholesome way, which is very different to the way he talks about light in some and the sun in some of those other poems that he wrote sort of after the war. This is very much about encapsulating a time possibly be with that kind of romantic era before things changed. Um, paste of gold. It's a very warm, nostalgic sort of poem, a little bit sad perhaps because time's actually moving on and these are little places that I just left. Uh, very sensory images, locusts burnt in the pepper trees, drown me with syrups. Um, it's a very sensory um, poem to put the reader back there in that moment.